on in three, two, one. Hey, everybody. Good to see you again. So glad that you're on here. Thank you so much for tuning into our Zoom class today. I'm very excited and uh, happy to be giving the class today. And just want to tell you, if you were on my concert on Friday, I thank you so much for being on that. I had a great time. Uh, we filmed that at the Corporate Office Live. And we had somewhere around 170 students on and uh, some more got on the YouTube and watched it. So if you miss a class or if you miss a concert, make sure to go to YouTube.com, Fletcher Music Centers, and you can see all of the classes that you've either missed, you want to re-watch them, or watch the concerts once again. So I'm going to start out with a little number here. I'm going to do one that I did in my concert. Uh, doing a little country uh, with some bluegrass because one of the features I'm talking about today is used a lot in this setting. So please enjoy a little bit of the train. If you have your whistle with you, we'll wake up a little bit at 2 o'clock today in Florida woo, time, woo. and we'll put that up here. So please enjoy some fiddles on the train background. I'm playing on a Lowry Inspire. All right, here we go. for Jason there. Man, what a great opening number. Before he gets started with his class, I did want to ask uh, if everybody, you know, we got a huge group of people here, which we love having all these students on on Zoom. It's still an incredible experience for us as educators to get all of you guys from various points around the country and even uh, across the sea, uh, some people. So what I want to ask everybody, if you can, uh, in the chat feature, type in what organ you have. Okay, so remember that chat is one of the options you have at the bottom of your screen, should be about right there if you're on a laptop or a desktop, um, or if you have a, um, uh, a cell phone or, or a tablet, you're gonna have to tap and it'll show up. So if, if everybody, if you can, if you can find it, let us know what instruments you have, and then that'll help Jason uh, in terms of what he's gonna show us all today. So I'm going to turn it back over to him. Thank you for everybody for participating. And here is our featured educator of the day, Jason Bontrager. All right, lights, camera, action. Hello, everybody, again. Hope you enjoyed that opening number. So the reason I played that, uh, for one, was to wake you up a little bit, get you ready to learn some new stuff, and also uh, because it used a feature that I'll be talking about today. I've chosen one feature to talk about that is for everyone and I've also chosen some music. So we have these materials, so make sure that you get the materials after the class and uh, during the class, make sure you have um, something to write on and to write with. But as we go through here, Brian's gonna be showing my notes. And so don't write anything down yet. Uh, and if you miss something as you're taking notes, then you'll see it later. So if you, you, know, if you just sit back and listen to everything I say and wait to write it down, 
uh, in the time that I'm here, he'll be showing what exactly to write. So we're going to kick this off, and there's a couple section I have that's uh, going to be open for discussion, which I'm really excited about to hear some of your comments and some of your input, because one of the best things about being a Fletcher Music Center uh, teacher and clinician, and sometimes I do concerts and different things, is even whenever we teach this stuff every day, we come in, we teach it to a class, and every now and then a student has something that they say, and we look at each other and say, did you know that? No, we didn't know that. Well, we're going to try it out, and sure enough, it works. So we learn just as much from you as you guys can learn from us. So I thank you again for being here. We're going to go ahead and start right into the music of the day. So go ahead, and if you could, uh, screen share. Brian, I'm going to play the song through one time, and he's going to share the uh, title of the page, and that is called... The song for the day is Aloha, Oi. Now, I've heard people say away, Aloha, away. And I did so many concerts, and I said, and I'm now going to play Aloha, away. And they said, you're saying it incorrectly. And I said, I'm not sure about that. But sure enough, they were right. So it's pronounced Aloha, Oi. Am I right? Aloha, Oi, Vey. Oh, okay. Oi, Vey. There it is. Well, that's a great little picture there. And so we're going to go ahead to the first page. This is a two pager. And again, you can get this music. This is not coming out of any book. Uh, this was designed for this specific class. And uh, you'll notice um, today I'll be teaching some new chords and I'll be teaching the way to set this up and everything like that. But in the music, you'll notice some little stars there. And whenever you see the star, that means to use your glide. And I'm going to be talking about that today. So here we go with Aloha Oi. Yeah, thank you so much. And as you guys know, you got to make sure you remember to feed the birds there. At the very end of that particular rhythm style, we have some birds. And they're hungry birds. So if, uh, if we take a little bit of side note here, if you have an organ that has a bench like this, can we do the camera on the bench here? So you have a bench like this. This bench was made to open up for that specific reason. You can put your bird seed right here so you can make sure that you feed your birds on the aloha. Welcome to Hawaii, everyone. So this is a very easy song 
But the thing that I'm teaching today is a very complex uh, method of playing and making yourself and your playing sound even better and more professional and what we call more authentic, which means that whenever I play a Hawaiian guitar, I need to make sure to sound more authentic, which means that if I just played it like this, that's nice, but it's not the way that you would hear it played if you walked into Hawaii, into the big motel there, the hotel, the pink hotel, right? The famous one, it has a restaurant in it, and you'll hear this. And now you know, now you know, that's how you know you're in Hawaii, right? The hula skirts just come on. But let me tell you, there's a lot more to the glide than just Hawaiian music. So we're going to talk about that a little bit today. But before we do, if Brian can jump over to the music for me again, page one, we're going to talk about the music because this is for everybody. What if you say to yourself, I have an easy one, I don't have a glide. Well, this is for you because we're talking about how to set it up, the chords to use, some fingering positions, some tips to how to practice a song like this and other songs that you can apply to every song you learn, as well as some extra chords for those of you who enjoy playing extra chords in your song. You know, this song only has three chords and you might have heard a couple others thrown in. So let's start on first page all the way to the top there, Brian, if you can scroll there. We will send you to this, uh, we'll send you the uh, email with this music in it later, but as we go through here, you can take some notes. So Hawaiian music is universally, uh, universally loved. Touch song setup and scroll to Aloha. Then touch the select button. Your instrument will now be set up for a perfect Hawaiian guitar sound and the setup for the song. And then it says at the very top, sometimes we see Big band, Broadway, swing, rock, 8-beat, 16-beat. But right there it says very simply, use song setup. Now for this particular song, it's not a song that uh, you can interpretate and change to make it your own. Even though you can use different sounds and make it sound the way you like it, this is a Hawaiian song. So really the best way to play a song like this is to use a Hawaiian background. So whenever you use a song setup, it takes you perfectly to that Hawaiian background. And in just a second, I'll tell you how to do that. But you're probably wondering, do I have song setup? And the answer is maybe if you have an instrument that is an easy four or above, if you have an LC model or you have an SU model or you have an A series like a Sterling Patriot legend, uh, prestige, you have a stardust, a royale, uh, you even maybe you have a carnival and maybe you have a um, one that comes out called the uh, century. You know, we have a lot of different instruments that have come out and the question is that you need to ask yourself and find out if you don't know, do I have songs set up? And if you do, chances are you have this rhythm, uh, you have this setup. So if I could get a little camera on the organ here. I'm playing today on an Inspire. It has the window. We call it the window. You see our workshops that call big window models. This is a small window. It's a single square. If you have a, um, an Imperial, Sterling, or Patriot, the first virtual orchestras, you have one that's double. If you have a marquee, grand marquee, or aria, you have one that's quadruple. So you have four of these screens but in that screen you'll have one that looks just like this uh, if you can get a little closer with the camera here and in my screen right here we have a little button right over here called song setup can we get a little okay that's close enough so song setup when i touch that it brings it right up and what does that say right over here brian okay let's see here if we can okay there it is aloha so when i touch that it's like Christmas. Everything on the organ lights up because it sets everything up for me. Even if you have an easy four, you don't have all these buttons, but it still sets it up. And on this instrument, I have all these buttons, but it sets it up the same way for me to be able to play it. So here we go. You start with a chord. <laughs> Okay, there's your Hawaiian. It sets me up with a Hawaiian guitar. Okay, so we're ready to go. 
and even if you want to change the sound now before i play this all the way through because it's a shorter song and very uh it's directly um influenced by hawaiian music i just use the top keyboard because it's just hawaiian guitar but if you're somebody who wants to change your sounds of course this is a different workshop but you have different setups you have sounds if you don't have setups let's say you have an easy two or an easy four you don't have any setups but you do on your right hand side have all these different sounds that you can go in and find a guitar that's like hawaiian guitar but on this instrument i have two keyboards and with the song set up it set up the rhythm it set up a sound on the top then I have a sound on the bottom. So let's say if I, if I wanted to change sounds, I could do so. So here we go. Brian just asked me if I have Hawaiian socks. And actually, I do not have on Hawaiian socks. Today is Wednesday, so it's Sushi Wednesday, if you can learn how to work the camera. These are my sushi socks. They have sushi on them, yes, to remind me to go to Publix and get the $5 sushi today. Your so socks anyway, are delicious. <laughs> All righty, so I just used the bottom keyboard and had a whole different sound. And actually, it's, uh, it's Lowry, uh, the geniuses from Lowry, that combines different sounds. And in this case, it has like a synthesizer type sound. I can hear some vocals in there, and I can hear a Hawaiian guitar. So they did something weird. But with yours, I think on an easy four song setup, it gives you a vocal on the bottom, which is really pretty for this song. All right, so let's, what's that? Oh, it's the doo-doos. Okay, good. All right, so check that out if you have it. Let's go back to the music real quick. So if you don't have, you're probably saying, well, I don't have song set up. I have an easy two. I don't have song set up, and that is okay. You probably may not have the Hawaiian rhythm either. And that is okay. On your instrument, you have, um, you can use either a couple different things. Uh, if you have an easy instrument, you have a button called Smooth. If you have an SD Discovery 3 or even a Freedom 3. Now, the Freedom 3 has Aloha in the song setups. I don't think the Freedom 3 has a Hawaiian background, but it gets really close. So, again, song setup is the number one thing. If you have that, use song setup for this particular song. It sets everything up for you. If you don't have it, use your Smooth button. And if you don't have a smooth button, use what's called mellow. I'm going to go ahead and play it with the smooth. I'm going to pretend like I don't have the Hawaiian and I don't have song set up. But again, even on an easy two, you can play the song. So here's a little bit of it using a smooth background uh, right off the easy two. Here we go. Testing. That will work for this song. So you don't have song set up. You don't have the Hawaiian button, which is under mix. If you have the Hawaiian background, it's under mix. But if you don't have that, that's okay. You can use a background called smooth. Now, we're going to talk about the feature. I'm sorry. Before we go to the feature, we're going to go back to the music. So, Brian, there's a couple chords I want to add. So if you could go to page one for me. In this piece of music, I've actually included a couple different things. We're going to go on back to my song setup. So I have it set up for Aloha perfectly. Uh, on this instrument, I have the Hawaiian. So here we are. Okay. So it's ready to go. Now, no chord means you play just the note, and then you play the chord.
When you see that little star above your note, it means to use the glide. We're going to be talking all about the glide after we get through the music. So we're going to move on past that. The next chord is a C chord. Okay. The next chord is a G chord. And if you like to make it a little bit more advanced, you can play a G7 chord, which is F and G. For any seven chords, you go down two notes, not counting the name of the chord. So if I have a G, you go down to F sharp and F. So it's F and G. So here we go. Okay, I'm on the third line now, and the chord is C, and the note is E. If you would like to be a little bit more aggressive using your glide, which we'll come back to that in just a second, you can put a little star above that E. So on the third line down, the chord is C, the note is E, and you can put a glide right there. Uh, I'll start on the G7 and play that. There it is. Now it repeats itself. Right there, I decided to make a little change. You know why? Because it's the same thing over and over again, and you don't want to get bored. And if you're somebody who's more advanced as a player, you want to add a chord right there. So there's a line in the music on the fourth line down between the first and second measure and if you see that line we're going to put an a minor seven right there brian's pointing to that spot on the screen right now so here it is uh starting if you would go up to the f chord there brian that's where i'm going to start and listen with your ears and see if you can hear the chord change to an a minor seven here we go All right, let's move on to page two. Go ahead, page two there, Brian. Scroll on down. So page two, we have the C chord. And you notice there's a thing right there, circle it there, Brian, called a tie. And the tie combines two notes. So that's a, a four-beat note there, a whole note, four counts, and then a dotted half note, which is three counts. So that is the equivalent of, I don't know, four, five, six, seven beats. It doesn't matter. And honestly, you don't have to hold it that long. But in the music, that's how long it's held for you to come back in perfectly on time. So we're going to put an F chord right there. Circle that spot for me. Because you hold that chord so long, we're going to go to the F chord and then back to a C chord. Okay? All right, in just a second, I'll show you that on the camera, what it looks like. But uh, here's what it sounds like. Let's switch over the camera here, Brian, to the music, if you can get on the music on the organ. I'll show you guys what that looks like. Because we have to hold that for seven counts, that's a long time. And this is a slow song. So you can always add a chord that makes it sound different. Here it is. I'm going to start if you can see the music. Uh, get that a little closer to me here. And then we're going to go right here. I'm going to get my little fancy pen here, and we're going to add the chords right to the music. So, Brian, what's the best spot for you? Okay. All right, so there it is. Oh, there it is. Okay. There's a C chord, and then there's an F chord. So we're going to do this right here.
Can everybody see that? During the tie, because you're just holding a note down, you want something to happen there. So we're going to go to the F chord and then back to the C chord. Use your ears and listen to it again. Here we go, E, D, B, C, and then F chord back to a C. You'll hear it. All right, did everybody hear the change? Okay. All right, we're moving right along here. So to make this into more of an arrangement, we're going to hit the transpose button. Turn it back to the music there. We're going to transpose up one half step after that phrase. And if, uh, if you've been doing this for a while, you know the reason is, is because it repeats itself. So now we want to make it sound a little different. So here we are at the end of the phrase where I'm going to play the C chord, F chord, then back to C chord transpose it up one half step and then we start again but it sounds brand new so here it is There it is again, line two, uh, right before the second little star of my glide, I played that A minor seven again, and I have put a line there in the music for you to put your new chord there. Why? Well, the C chord sounds great, but if you add that one little change, it leads to the G7 even stronger and gives you another chord where the music changes. So here we go again from the key before on the C chord where I go to F and C. I just added that. I transpose up and listen for that A minor 7 chord on the second line going to the note E, which has the glide, and I've provided the line there for you. Here we go. Listen for it. See if you can hear it with your ears. Let's keep going. There it is for the last time. The last, uh, I'm sorry, the one, two, three, fourth line down. Last measure, there's a line there. After the C chord, it goes A, G, C, and then there's an A minor seven chord right there on the E. I'll start there and finish the song. And of course, there's your ending button. You get up get the bird feed get the bird feed out of the bench and feed the birds there they are any questions on the music because we're about to get to the feature of the day which is the last part of my workshop which uh, what I'm about to start showing you uh, you can use for all songs not just this one but are there any questions on the music go ahead Brian open it up Yeah, everybody, if you have any questions for Jason, uh, type it in the chat there, or you can also use that raise hand feature. Or if you can't figure out either one of those, just start flailing your arms wildly and we'll probably see you. 
Nope, I see Ines flailing, or maybe she's just waving. All right, Ines, uh, do you have a question? Yeah. Yep. Last, okay, where did you make that last um, where you added the course? Not Great question. Uh, yeah. Brian, go ahead and go to page two of the music. The last chord that I added, it's very easy. The only chords I added today was A minor seven. That was the only chord. But the last one uh, on page two was the fourth line down before yeah. the note E on the last measure. There's a line right there to add a chord. Brian, if you want to circle that for me. It's the last before the last measure on the fourth line right there. That's an A minor seven. And for those of you wondering, that's a, a note G, A, and C. Okay. So is, is it fair to say that if you see an extra line in the chord section, you can put A oh, I see it. Right? Yeah, I see it. Absolutely. Okay. Yep. Okay. Thank you. Yeah, the song is very simple. However, the concept today that I'm going to teach called the glide is not simple. Uh, and I, we're going to get to that in a second. Go ahead. More questions for the music. Got a question from uh, from Gene. Gene, if you'd like to unmute yourself. Gene Cerna. We had a raised hand, but I think you'll you'll have to click unmute if you want to ask a question. Mute. Okay, I do want to oh. ask a question. Yes. Um, I had a doctor's appointment this morning, and this is done not from here. I need to see the whole class again uh, live. Do you do this same in stuff Thursday? Yes, ma'am. Tomorrow at 2 o'clock, I'll be doing the same type of class on the same features and the same song. That is tomorrow, Thursday at 2 o'clock. And also, you can go to YouTube.com. That's Y-O-U. T-U-B-E, YouTube.com on the internet. Look up Fletcher Music Centers. It's very simple. Uh, that's the name of our company. Fletcher Music Centers, and you can see all the classes that have been recorded. Thanks for the question. Thank you. We've got one more question before I move on here. We, we had one in the chat. Um, can you give us the extra notes you played in the right hand, you <laughs> fancy man, you? <laughs> All right, so that's a very good question. And with this song, I'm really happy you asked that because some songs, I, I have to tell you no, because I don't know. They come naturally. But in this song, it's very simple. Every one of the extra notes, if you can see my hands here, uh, every one of the extra notes comes from the chord. So this is a very simple song, F, C, G7, and then we've added the A minor 7. So an F chord, for example, is a three-note chord that is F, A, C. So whenever I play the notes, I'm playing the notes in the chord together. So I have in an, what's what we call, this is a little bit advanced, so don't get confused and don't worry about it if you're not sure but I play the notes of the F chord uh, with the F note, which is the melody on top. So, and I play the A, C, and F. A, C, F. So if you know an F chord is an F, A, C. If you take the F and you move it up to the top, now you have no F on the bottom, but you have an A, C, F. And so if you look at the music, you can add the chord tones. In fact, ACF is the notes before it. It's actually outlining the chord. So the easiest answer is, actually, I don't add any notes. I just hold down those notes because they're a part of the chord. It's the same thing with the C chord. A C chord is C-E-G, C-E-G. We'll look at the next notes, G-C-E. Those are the same notes, so I play those. And then I put a glide. The reason I, now if you have a harmony feature, boy, I love Dennis All. He said, if you don't have five part, just use block. Anyway, that's a, that's, <laughs> that's, <laughs> I tell you what, that's a fun little joke. If you've ever seen Dennis All, he loves his block harmony. But in this case, if you have no clue what I'm talking about, 
you can still sound like this by using harmony aoc it's going to use the same three notes with one finger so here we go and there you can hear here it is one note here it is with harmony here it is with jason harmony so if you don't know how to add those notes just use your harmony feature and use if you don't have harmony let's say you only have one you just have duet well it's better than nothing so if you just have duet harmony use it if you have AOC that's the one I would recommend and the way I add the notes is actually AOC harmony I hope I answered your question any more questions on the music because we got to move on I got a lot of feature stuff to teach here, Brian. Yeah, I would say move on. We, we had one other question that says, is this class number 11? And the answer to that is, I don't know. And that's okay because all of these classes are independent. So any class that you see is, is not based off of the last one. And so any class on Wednesday or Thursday that you come to um, is, is completely independent, taught by a different instructor. So, Well, I can answer that. This class is actually number one. Just so you know, it's number one as the best class there is. No, I'm just kidding. We have had so many good instructors. Robert kicked this thing off. And I tell you, we all owe a round of applause for Robert. He really got this thing going virtually so that we could all share the music with you at home. Um, and then, of course, we are all adapting uh, as we continue this virtual thing. I'm not sure who's teaching next week, but I know Brian's doing the concert this, uh, this Friday. I did the concert last Friday. And anything that you miss... Once again, you can go to YouTube.com. We're going to move on now. If there's any other questions, put them in the chat, and I'll send you an email with the answer. I'll give you a call to help you out. we got to move on with the features. So, Mr. Brian, if you can go to page one of my second uh, PDF there, we're going to go ahead and talk about the glide. So I actually got a lot of questions on this because I played a song called House of the Rising Sun during my concert, and I used the glide all the time for that. Uh, just page, just the first page, just the top page there, Brian. No answers yet. So this is the notes that we're going to take. And uh, once again, I will show you what to write down as we continue to go. But let's go ahead to that first page. And it says, what instruments to use? If everybody can see that there and you're taking notes, these are the instruments that you use. So let me go ahead and tell you what to write. You can go ahead to page two because of the lack of time here. I don't have time to showcase all of them. But if you go to page two, I'll read them off. Hawaiian guitar, what we're using right now. There it is. A blues guitar. So if you're playing something like I did, uh, I opened my concert with Bill Haley in the comments, and I got this right here. If you heard that, that makes the guitar sound more authentic. And that's another instrument to use for glide. Another instrument to use is steel guitar. So if you've ever heard country music before, you've probably heard of the steel guitar, also called the lap steel, uh, also called the dobro. And the dobro, they use this weird thing called a slide on their finger. And it makes it sound like this. right yeehaw that's what we would say in my hometown of Bartow we have a lot of bluegrass music the next one there I'm gonna have you write down is trombone trombone should be a given because trombone is an instrument that has a slide and with the slide you know you think about Tommy Dorsey you think about um, all the famous trombone players out there or just the sound of the trombone and I tell you what they had a slide which meant that they could go uh, and slide into a note which is what we call on the instrument glide. Here's another one. Oh yeah, that's a slide trombone right there. And if they were a trombone player and they had a slide, of course they would use it all the time. Let's say Tommy Dorsey stepped out and played Misty. Give me the keyboard here, Brian. I'll do a little Misty and I'll use the slide and you can hear it. Here we go.
Don't take it off me there, Brian. But the next instrument is a saxophone. Saxophones, every type of them. What kind of saxophone? The type of saxophone, alto sax, tenor sax, soprano sax, Kenny G. Oh, my goodness. If you've ever listened to Kenny G, you've probably fallen asleep. But every other note, he uses that glide. So here we go. Continue on with a little Misty using Jimmy Dorsey on the saxophone. <laughs> As you know, I play House of the Rising Sun a lot. That's one of my favorites. And that guitar is another one. All right. So we're going to get to how I'm doing that in just a second. Because even if you're somebody sitting there says, I use the glide all the time. I know what I'm doing. That's great. But there's multiple ways to use it. And there's lots of tips and tricks. So here we go. The next one is clarinet. If you've ever heard the famous Rhapsody in Blue, don't worry, Brian, this is my longest section of the whole part. But the clarinet, he's over here, like, you know, looking at his watch, you know, like Bill Haley, rock around the clock over here. All right, so clarinet, if, if you know anything about uh, Rhapsody in Blue, they use the clarinet at the very beginning of that. And let me just find a nice clarinet here. So where, were, where am I going here? Okay, yeah, big band. Big band's always got a clarinet. Number three, okay. So here we go. There it is. The jazz clarinet really did a great job. The next one is fiddle. Go ahead to my page there so they can be taking notes here. Fiddle. The fiddle is what I played in my opening number with the train. And so here's the thing. There's, a th there's an instrument called the violin, and I don't think if you go to an orchestra concert, I, I really don't think that you're going to be seeing a violin player sliding in and out of notes. But the fiddle... So the fiddle is a great thing, and they slide all over the place. Can I make a quick joke? Sure. Oh gosh, I, I have to. I have to interject. Sorry, guys. This is this is an Eric Vaughn joke for anybody who knows Eric Vaughn from our Osprey store. First person at Fletcher Music I ever met ten years ago he said, "Do you know what the difference between a violin and a fiddle? One plays strings, one plays strangs." But did a shh. <laughs> That concludes my stand-up comedy for the day. Thank you. All right, on to the next one here. So let's talk about that real quick, though. I'm really happy you said that because he's absolutely right. And uh, from where I come from, the ones who play violin, they have all their teeth, Brian. But the ones who are playing fiddle, they have one or two left, I tell you what. Anyway, but you'll never go to a wedding, right? You'll never go to the wedding and see a violin player playing like this. You're never going to see him sliding in the notes. Whenever you see a violin player, they play the real thing without sliding at all. They play the right notes, and it's very nice and pretty like this. Believe me, if they started sliding around during the wedding and the bride's walking down the aisle... Somebody would probably ask, I wonder what they've had to drink. Or are they from Bartow? Anyway, we'll get on from that. They're in the wrong band. But the, f but the other thing is, uh, the other instrument that I'm going to mention is cello. So cellist, even classical cellist, and this is uh, something people wonder about, but they do slide into notes. 
Um, cello is very famous. If you've ever seen a cello player, they hold it between their legs and they slide into a lot of notes and they do a lot of vibrato. And that's a different workshop. But let me show you some cello using the glide. You can make it sound just as nice. So here we go. You know, with violin, violin players usually don't slide into notes, but you'll see cello players, even classical players, slide into notes. It's an authentic sound of cello. Let's move on. How to use the con uh, glide controller. So go on to my next page there, Brian. Uh, just the blank screen, page one of that whole PDF so they can see, or page two, actually, so they can, okay, there you go. There you go. That's fine. That's fine. There you go. No, 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 this page. Okay, there you go. So there's the next thing. I have written in there, left kick switch. So if you have an easy two, easy three, easy four, easy up, up and up, Liberty, Sterling, Patriot, any organ, any organ actually. And if you don't know, uh, you got to get on your hands and knees and look into your volume expression pedal. Take a look to the left and see if there's a kick switch there. And here's how you do it. Go on to the next page down there because we're going to have to move on here so I don't make it too long. But the left kick switch, you also have a touch bar. That's fine. No, 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 the one you were just on there. You also have a touch bar, you have pedal magic, and you have a half step below. So what is he talking about? So go on and uh, show me back here on the organ, and I'll talk about it. If you have... If you have a kick switch only, you don't have a touch bar, you don't have pedals, then you're going to want to do something very simple, and that is if I can get a little camera here, we're going to show you the right technique. you got to use your sock, right? You don't want to have your shoe in there. You want to have your sock, and you put your foot right here. You put your weight on your heel, so just like this. The weight's on the heel, so you can move your foot back and forth. You're going to put your weight on the heel. It really it, smells bad in here all of a sudden. It's fine. Oh, be quiet. And now we're going to go to the left, and we're going to release. If you use a shoe, chances are you might not be able to feel it, but with a sock, you can feel the switch. And right now, I'm going back and forth. This is a great practice. Look, oh, I want to use my glide in Aloha, and I want to use it in the perfect spot, but I've never used it before. You won't be able to use it. You have to put your foot with a sock in there, put the weight on your heel, and practice going to the left. Press a note on one of the instruments that we named, and then now we go to the left. If you have pest control, you might have a mosquito problem, but that's okay. So you can practice doing this. Okay, so that's how you do that. Let's move on. The touch bar right here. You have what's called a touch bar. I don't have a touch bar. Well, then you use your kick switch. But if you have a touch bar, uh, this instrument has one because it's a smaller instrument. But if you have two, it has a split. Left touch bar, right touch bar. And in your screen, you have an option on page 9, feature page 9, for the touch bar. But by default, your left touch, yeah, uh, by default, the left touch bar is your glide. So here we go using the touch bar. Let's go back to Aloha real quick because I really love the sound of the Hawaiian guitar for all this stuff. Okay. Now, if you're playing chords... Wow. Take a note, you're going to use your thumb. Again, I will be showing you all the notes for this, so if you miss anything, they will be on the screen in just a second. But I use my thumb because if your chords are here, your fingers don't need to come down to do a glide because then you don't know where your chords are at. You take your thumb. You can't see it from this angle, but my thumb is going down while my chords are still up. So here we are.
me let me see if I can get that for you. One more time, left thumb. All right, moving right along here. Now you have a new thing right down here at my feet with my sock. Good thing I wear my sushi socks today. Yes, Sushi Wednesday. Uh, we're not sponsored, but go to Publix, get your $5 sushi. Okay, moving right along here. You have what's called pedals. These are bass pedals. If you know who Joni Monero is, she kicks these things faster than the speed limit on the I-75 interstate. I tell you what, she goes all over the place kicking these things because she plays bass pedals. But I do not play bass pedals. So we have a feature, if you can get close right here, Brian, it's around the corner here, but it's an orange button. You'll have an orange button called Pedal Magic. Pedal Magic. And whenever I touch that, it turns on my Pedal Magic. And is what I can do, and if you don't have a button, you have page seven. Again, the notes will pop up in just a second. In fact, if you can, Mr. Brian, uh, go to the last page of this uh, handout and they can see everything I'm talking about. But if I go to page seven on feature, it is the pedal magic. And I can scroll until it says glide sustain. So here it comes, everybody. There's all your notes right there. Let's review left kick switch. Put your weight on your heel. Use your socks. Practice moving the kick switch back and forth. Play before or after the note. We'll come back to that. Touch bar, use your left touch bar and left thumb so your fingers can play the chords. Pedal magic, activate through feature page seven. That's what I just said. And now glide sustain is on. And now I can use any pedal. Go ahead back to the camera there to my feet and I can show you how that's done. Okay, let me tell a quick story here. I was at a bus trip, a field trip. We used to take people on a field trip on a motor coach to our corporate office and have a special artist of the day. I know uh, Joni Monero, she works in our store here in Sun City Center, and she was an artist at one time. We've had Marco Mendez, we've had Jim Vogelman, we've had uh, Rosemary Bailey, we've had everybody, and we have had such a good time at field trips. But I remember one time I was there as a guest, and my job was to, you won't believe this, my job was to show and hopefully uh, have somebody and help somebody with their next purchase of the next organ. And I had a lady and she had a knee problem with her knee. And every time she came up to me and she had an easy four and she said, Jason, I can't get my glide to work. And when I do, it sounds just like this. <laughs> And I can't get, and every time I do it the right way, my knee really hurts. And I said, come on over here to the Easy 10. The Easy 10 has these pedals, and Joni, she can play them real fast. And the artist that day was a pedal player. So everybody thinks, well, those are just to play the bass. And if you don't play the bass pedals, they're there just to hold the organ up. And that's true. But if you have pedal magic, you can actually, if I can see my feet one more time, I showed this sweet lady. I said, put your foot on any one of these pedals. And here's what happened. She loved what I was showing her. Her husband was there with her. He was off eating a hamburger. As you know, we have some of the best burgers. He was eating a hamburger, and I had her put her foot on any of these pedals. And I said, go ahead and press it down when I tell you. And she said, oh, my gosh. And he said, oh, crap, we're buying a new instrument today. And sure enough, that was the reason she purchased an EZ-10 was for the pedals. She doesn't play the pedals, but the fact that she could take her foot out of the expression pedal and have to not kick it to the left or use a touch bar and take her hands off her chords, she could use what was called pedal magic. And once again, feet on my, uh, or, or camera on my feet here, Brian. <laughs> Let's take it to another example. We're going to rock around the clock for just a second with Bill Haley's guitar, but watch my feet. It's 
that easy. Now, if you don't have pedals, you can get used to putting the weight on your heel. So let's go ahead and recap everything for the feature of the day, which is glide. So back to the page there, Brian, the last page in the second PDF I sent you there. And you guys will all get this today in your email, but this is it. What? Oh, Saturday. Saturday you'll get this. Okay, that's fine. What, you're going to get it sometime, but here it is. So what instruments to use? Just a recap. Hawaiian guitar, blues guitar, steel guitar, trombone, saxophone, clarinet, fiddle, and the cello. Does anybody, in just a second, I'll open it up and see if anybody can think about, oh, wrong page there. Uh, go to this one right here, Brian. Yeah, it's all good. All right, I'll see if anybody can come up with a different instrument in just a second. So once again, Hawaiian guitar, blues guitar, House of the Rising Sun, uh, what I just did, Bill Haley, steel guitar, trombone, saxophone, clarinet, fiddle, and cello, how to use the glide, left kick switch, touch bar, pedal magic, and half step below. We're going to do that real quick in just a second. Left kick switch, put your weight on your heel, use socks, practice moving the kick switch back and forth, and play before or after you play the note. Using left touch bar, left thumb, so your fingers can play the chords, and activate through feature page 7 if you're going to use your pedal magic, and you have to set it to glide sustain, which started on the easy 10. You can use any pedal for this. Uh, uh, camera on my fingers real quick. If you don't have any way to glide, real quickly, half step below. So if I'm going to do a little country here on the fiddle, and we're going to do rocky top. So here we go. Okay, so if you don't have a way to glide, you can go to half step below. Can I get a little closer right here, Brian? So I'm going to go right here, half step, which means the next key down, which in this case is a black key, and we're just going to slide into the note. That's the same thing as using glide. Or if you don't have a glide switch, you can still get good at it by doing this. Here it is. Did you hear it? I'm using a half step below, but if you have that glide, it sounds a lot more what we call authentic to the instrument. All right, so now you can go on to that last page there, Brian, the PDF number three. We're done. Absolutely. He's telling me it's time for a commercial break. We got to do our commercial break. So I thank you everybody for being on. Here's our PDF number three. Check it out. This is all the notes from everything I just mentioned from Aloha. Uh, where are we at here, sir? He's doing a great job. We got our director over here. I tell you what, we just got a call from Howard Mandel for a Grammy nomination over here. Okay, so Aloha, that's the name of the style, that's the name of the song. You're gonna use your song setup. If you don't have that, you're gonna use mellow or smooth. Today we talked about the glide, and obviously it says right there everything we did, left kick switch, left touch bar, pedal magic, glide sustain, or half step below. Use the correct instruments. A piano will not glide. Pianos don't do that. Make sounds more authentic. Thank you so much for joining, everybody. Is there any questions while we wrap this up? I know it went a little long, but I appreciate everybody. There's a lot of information today. Thanks for sticking on there. Any questions? Any questions for Jason today? Should have raised your hand if you have a question because you're muted if you're talking. Okay. We got a question from Claire. Claire, if you can unmute yourself. How you doing? Claire, did you have a question? Maybe she was just testing out the raise hand feature. Inez says, you are the best next to Brian. I'm not sure what that means. I am the best, and I am sitting next to Brian. Thank think, you so I much. That, yes, I think that's, I I think that's exactly that. what it means. <laughs> <laughs> well, let me let me give you guys a couple announcements real quick. If you have any questions, think them up in the next couple seconds here. Um, I'm going to switch my video so you can see me for a second here. Hello, everybody again. I just wanted to make sure everybody knows about our social media presence. So this is something that you guys can help us out with. we got 75 people on the meeting here. 
And this is something you can do that's very, very little effort that will help us out a lot. So we have three different social media presences that you can get on and be involved with at almost no effort to you. So one is our website, which is FletcherMusic.com, and that one's going to be really updated in July. About July 1st, we're going to have all of our classes, all of the stuff that you would need to know uh, to do all of our online offerings will be updated in July. Another one is our Facebook, which is updated pretty regularly. But the most important one, I think, and I'm, I'm maybe a little bit partial to this one, but I love our YouTube channel. You got to get on our YouTube channel. If you're not on there, you are missing out because if you go to our YouTube channel, it's very easy to remember. It's youtube.com slash Fletcher Music Centers, and that's centers with an S. So Y-O-U-T-U-B-E dot com slash Fletcher Music Centers. You go there, you can access anything that we've done. Now, Unfortunately, I forgot to record our Conductor Magic class. So if you were on that one earlier, I'm sorry. I've, that was my fault. I forgot to record it. But just about everything else that we've done in the last like few months is on our YouTube channel. And you can go and watch that as many times as you want for free. The, to me, it's such a huge educational resource that if you guys aren't utilizing, you should be. And it, it's obviously no cost to you. All you have to do is go to our YouTube channel. You can clip... Uh, click the subscribe button if you want to and you'll, you'll get notified for uh, any new videos that we come out with but when you go there all of our videos are on there so Jason played who, who taught the class today played a great concert last week and if you want to watch that again watch it anytime you want at the YouTube channel you know Joni who is another employee at our store here uh, taught a great class a couple weeks ago and if you wanted to review her notes, you can watch that anytime you want. So to me, this is a huge, huge resource that you guys can utilize anytime you want for, for free. You know, it, it's, it doesn't get any better than that. So that's youtube.com slash Fletcher Music Centers. And that's my uh, little commercial for today. I hope you guys will go check us out on YouTube. And I'm going to give it over to Jason for, oh, it looks like we have maybe one question before we give it back to, to Jason. Do we have a question from Claire? Yes, I kind of figured out how to unmute. <laughs> Hi, Claire. Can you hear me? Yep, I can hear you. Um, on my ARIA, I thought that the left uh, default touch bar was for FX and the right was for Glide. That, that, is, that is correct. The, the, if, if you have a split touch bar, the left is defaulted for fill-in or FX, and the right is uh, for glide. Oh, because he said he said that it was default on the left, and I, I was a little confused. Yes, I was backwards on that. That was my fault. I'm so glad you brought that question up. I'm actually using an Inspire today, which has one touch bar, so I set that to uh, oh, glide okay. using my left hand, but yes, I'm very sorry. The default, okay. if you have two, so a Sterling Patriot, um, look at your touch bar. If it has a split in the middle, you have two, and it actually labels it left and right. But yes, your left is FX, and your right will be the fill. No. I'm sorry. No, the right the, will be the glide. The, the right will be the glide, yeah. Okay. Thanks, Jason. Great class. Thank you. All right. Bye. Thank you guys so much for joining us today. I'm going to give it back to Jason because I know he wants to do one more big finishing number for us and thank you again for joining us for our variety class and here's Jason Bontrager with our closing number for today. Yeah I'm going to do House of the Rising Sun. You know I just did this for my concert but I got a lot of questions and I got a lot of comments about using the glide. So this is one of those songs so just so you know my personal preference is that I use the glide on my kick switch and to go back to the last question, yes. So you have your fill, or what's also called FX, on your left touch bar. Your right touch bar is set to your glide. Now, if you think about it, you need to glide while you play the note. So if you play the note with your right hand, and then you drop down to hit the glide with the touch bar, you lose your note. It doesn't do anything. I do not use that method. I also don't use my touch bar. I use my pedal magic when I do the glide for this song because if you listen to the way I do this 
the glide comes in at a specific time and a specific way to make the guitar that I'm using sound more authentic. When I go to the organ, I don't use the glide because the organ doesn't have glide. When I go back to the guitar, you'll hear the glide being used. Make sure when you're using your glide, you use these notes. We're going to send them out in the email. I think Saturday is when these will go out. So, And if you missed anything or you want to hear it again, you can watch on YouTube. Here we are, House of the Rising Sun. Now, Jason is about to rock out, guys. So I want, I'm going to spotlight some of you guys in the video. I want to see you dancing if you're enjoying the music. about a big hand for Jason. Thank you, everybody, wow. for being on today. If you want to see it again, I'll be on tomorrow at 2 o'clock for our other students, and I see some round of applause. I thank you, thank you, thank you, thank you. Big hand. Yeah. Thank and you. if you thank haven't... You. Oh, really? Left Jason. amazing yes, grace. She just called. Uh, she says, I haven't heard from you yet. And I, I said, you will. You just said it today. <laughs> 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 oh, no. no, I told her. I told her it would be... I told her, well, she just wanted to know if indeed you had it. <laughs> Thank you so much for being on, everybody. It's good to see you. Hope you Thank learned you. something today. Give Jason a wave if you're still on camera. Uh, thank you, Jason. Thank you. All right, everybody. What we'll a great question. Jason, Make sure you play, nice play, play. Thank you so much. We'll see you guys tomorrow. Bye-bye.